Now, the next vision that I want to finish this segment up with is this. This vision, I watched the hand of God because God said, I will not let utter annihilation take place in this nation. In the latter days, I will gather the wicked who have no heart to repent. I will gather them as I gathered the animals into Noah's ark. And I shut the door. I will gather them into cities that are marked for utter destruction. They will be in massive conferences and conventions. They will be parading down the streets in the nude and all their philosophies and all their demands and their haughtiness when the bombs hit. And you will see them no more. If you don't believe that, that's Psalms chapter 37. You will look for them, the Word of God says, and they will be ashes under your feet. I say to you, if you are watching this right now and you are haughty in your spirit and you say away with this Christian stuff and all this radical Christianity I plead with you it is time to repent behold today is the day of salvation if you don't turn now you will be drawn by the Spirit of God and when the destruction hits this nation it will take you out and you will be ashes under the believers feet the Word of God says it in that vision I saw missiles coming up over the coastal range they were cruise missiles I explained them to a gentleman just a few days ago who's an official from the Pentagon. And he asked me many questions about these missiles that came in out of the sea. They came off the sea. They were fired from the sea. And he said, Henry, those were cruise missiles. And he said, we've been worried about this. Because he said, you see, these subs, Akula subs and Typhoon subs are all loaded with cruise missiles. It's cruise missiles that are undetectable. And we're afraid they're going to take out our strategic command centers. I saw them coming, but I heard the voice of God, a powerful voice behind me say, Watch what I will do! And all of a sudden, as those missiles were just coming up over the coastal range, ash shot out and plumes above them, right in the path of them. Those cruise missiles are literally powered by turbofan cruise missiles, by turbo engines. They are made just like a jet engine. Ash gets into them, they shut down. In the vision, they went like this and they went down. They didn't even explode. Fail-safe systems in them. God is going to have areas marked across this nation where no penetration will be. They will not be hurt. I saw areas of giant plexiglass areas over cities. Certain cities. I will not name to you the cities. You obey the Lord, He'll make sure you're there. Just like He's going to make the wicked be in the wrong place, He'll have the righteous be in the right place if you will be honorable with the Lord. I saw masses of military men shooting everybody in sight. They split ranks and went around these dome areas and places where people were on their faces praying. They didn't even know they split ranks. They didn't even look at each other when they came back shoulder to shoulder as if to say, where have you been? It was the Spirit of the Lord that protected them. And that's what God says that He will do in this day. Then I saw the, the masses coming in of troops in some areas across this nation. Again, I heard the thundering voice saying, watch what I will do. And all of a sudden, volcanic eruptions of lava begin to flow out of these, these places. And rivers of lava, I saw them flow sideways on mountains and create walls of fire around areas. And the righteous were protected in those areas. Tanks don't go through lava. Troops don't walk through them. So the planes, next came the fighter planes and the bombers. And again the thundering voice said, watch what I will do. And as they came in, again the plumes of ash shot up in the path of them. And those that God were protecting, the planes never reached them. They crashed and burned. God has a plan, people. But I want to tell you something. If you want to be a part of His plan, you've got to walk and talk with Him. You've got to begin to commune and fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to stop calling this a we're talking about gloom and doom. It is not gloom and doom. It's the pleadings of God. It's the judgment of God. The wrath is soon to follow. Do you want the judgment of God? In Psalms chapter 37, it says, verse 10, the righteous talk of his judgment all the day long. It is not unrighteous to talk about the judgment of God. It is the word of God. The righteous seek his judgment, for in his judgment we become righteous. And it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I want to see him in the catching away. You better believe it. But I want to see him down here. I face too much in my life. I face too many guns and knives in my life. And I've survived them. I've, I've survived 27 minutes dead. I've survived armies around and terrorists around me. I've gone into their hideouts and I've come out alive. 
because the Lord protected me. And if He'll protect me, He will protect you. I'm not giving you a message of gloom and doom. I'm giving you a message of warning. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of the Lord. Not tomorrow. Today. Events are getting ready to snap, crackle, and pop around this world so fast. And God is wanting you and I, as His people, to be on the victor's side and not the victim's side. And I'll end with this. I asked the Lord about all these camps, like government camp that I mentioned to you. And I said, Lord, what about Auschwitz and, and all these different places where so many were imprisoned and killed? And the Lord answered me and said this. Different season, different generation. I promise that when this generation comes forth, it will not pass until all things spoken by the law and the prophets be fulfilled. All things talks in Psalms 91, Psalms 37, Psalms 2, the kings of the earth have set themselves in array against the Lord and against his anointed. But the Lord shall sit in the heavens. Will he chew his nails to the quick and say, Oh no, they're going to destroy all my people and I can't do a thing about it. It doesn't say that, people. It says he is going to sit in the heavens and laugh and hold them in derision and say, Hold on, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Mount Zion. Ask of me and I'll give you the heathen. God so loves the world that he doesn't want any to perish. That's the heathen. He doesn't want to give them to you as ashes under your feet. He wants to give them to you redeemed. He wants a mighty revival to take place across the land.